Hey, and welcome back to another Sneak Live session. I'm one of your hosts, Brian Clark. And uh, if you were just watching maybe some of the previous streams, we hope you're still here hanging out with us. And it's good to see you again. If you're just joining us now, thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have another fun session for you right here, right now. And I'm going to be bringing on another host that's going to help us with today's topic. And we're going to be doing is hacking a vulnerable OWASP Node.js application. OWASP, I don't know what that word means, but maybe our guest can help us learn a little bit more about that. Let's bring him on right now. Laron Tal. Hey, Laron, how's it going, man? Hey, how's it going? I'm good, thank you. Okay, can I do the introductions? Can I do it? Yeah, do it. All right, let me take you off. Hey, everyone, welcome. And we are restarting this because I want to do the introduction this time. So you are going to welcome the amazing, the master producer, the live JavaScript streamer, Brian Clark. There we go. There we go. Here he is, the most talented person I know. And how do you feel about that? How do you like my intros? <laughs> you, uh, I like it a lot, and you threw me for a loop there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do the next intro, too. You ready for this one? I'm ready. Let's hear it. OK. Let me ask you all, what is? What is sometimes better than one Brian? Do you know what it is? I'll tell you. Less two one, Brian's. Zero Brian's? Oh. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> zero. <laughs> Goofing around here as usual. Well, let me introduce the next person who's a amazing, talented Java developer, not just a developer, but a champion. He is Brian Vermeer. Come on, there we go. Woo! <laughs> It's. I think it's I a little bit too much. Have two. Have to have two Brian's on the thing. Let's let's let let me fix that. So fixed. <laughs> no, I can't. No, I'm kidding, man. Sorry, I had to do this. <laughs> uh, too much fun here. Yes. What's up? Way too much fun. You two just wrapped up a, a live hacking Java app right now, right? Yes, but you know, I, don't worry. I'm not switching over to Java, Laurent. Okay. <laughs> don't don't worry about that. Hey, but yes. are we getting Brian Vermeer to JavaScript? Is that is that a thing? Well, maybe that's why he's here. Maybe uh, it's it's enticing ah, of a session. Yeah, maybe maybe who knows? Maybe you can um, you can lure me in onto on, into the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I'm gonna show you. I don't know how long you're gonna stay, but I'll show you a bunch of stuff, and we'll see how much you like this uh, this this part of JavaScript, Brian. Well, let me let me move to the background, and I will leave it up to you because you're far more. Thing. I'm just I'm just dead weight to this uh, this thing. I, I I feel I feel you already. So uh, good luck, um, and uh, I will be following you. Cheers. See Sounds you. good. Bye bye. See ya. All right, cool. It's just us. It's boring again. Yeah, sorry. So, do you want to end it? Go. Yeah, home. we should. Okay, hold on. Let's um. Hold on. I got this. Don't worry. And ending. There you go. <laughs> All right, so what are we going to be doing today, Laurent? I want to hack a, um, an app. What is OWASP? I didn't, you know, that sounds like a really uh, fun name. You know, like, no, I got plenty of wasps right outside of my my house here that, you know, <laughs> like, are we just going to get like a fly swatter and try and whack them? That's, uh, you know, like, come on, man. I need to learn. I, enough I need to learn enough too. goofing around. Enough Brian's. <laughs> Let's get into this and learn something. I like the shirt too. What does your shirt say there? Um, oh, this is oh, there we go. Oh, shit, is it good? This one, this one. Oh, was there we go. This is oh, wow. from this 2016. I don't remember. Yeah, this is from nice. 2016. Yeah, this so is from uh, yeah, it's the t shirt. It, they are makers of t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's it's way too much in the afternoon. I, I should get a here's my my uh, my idea of a drink. I just drink coffee a lot, so uh, wow, don't do it. Don't do, no, that's it's my so late there. What are you doing? You're not taking care of yourself. No, I am. I am. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, cool. So what's oh what's why are we doing? What are we doing here, right? Um I've got my uh screen sharing stuff here. There we go. So um yep. So essentially OWASP is a uh, as you can see, it's like a foundation. You have like the whole uh, uh abbreviation for it, the open web application security project. You mentioned that last time, Brian, as well yesterday. Too right. Um, it's did you know it's like going all the way back to like uh, 2020? 
<laughs> all the way. It, like, says... it took me a second. I was like, all the way. Oh, wait. Oh. 20... oh, no, no, no. I, I, my bad. My bad. It says I, I'm stuck in 2020. I meant 2000. My bad. Oh. <laughs> it's like two decades back. There we go. That's, so, yeah, yeah, that's a long brain. time. Holy cow. 2000. Yes. Is that because of like the whole dot com boom and the web kind of really hitting hitting its stride then? Or yeah, I think the web, I think open source, uh, kind of like the end of uh, 1999, the whole uh, you know open source versus uh, you know corporates and stuff like that going under. Uh, so yeah, I think 2001 is perhaps when we got or 2003 when we got mm -hmm. like the first uh, OWASP uh, top 10 kind of like uh, awareness document. Uh, which is, oh, by the way, this is, I haven't seen it, but yeah, I haven't said what it is. So essentially OSP is this foundation. It's basically volunteers around the world. Um, the idea is they are helping promote all of those things around application security. So say all of those things, there's like a lot, right? You have anything from like uh, um, tooling. So OSP or, you know, people, OSP members, like, you know, people of the OSP community are building uh, tools that help you do uh, sanitization in the right way, help you do um, uh, things like uh, uh, output escaping, uh, d different sort of things, right? And they do it for like JavaScript and Java, like different SDKs, and they do more of it. They do things like um, um, like building tools that help you uh, learn about like educational tools, right? Like what we'll touch on today that are like uh, deliberately vulnerable so we can see how not to write uh, insecure code and also like how to fix it if, if we end up saying that. Uh, there's like community and events and chapters around the world and conferences. Um, there's like a bunch of stuff. So like, it's really worth uh, digging into it. Um, so there's all of it. And we'll touch today about one of those projects, which essentially looks at the OWASP top 10 and tries to basically put vulnerabilities around each item of the OWASP top 10. Uh, some of them, you'll see them. And I think you'll say, oh, of course, I don't write that code, uh, but we'll, we'll see how other people are actually doing the same thing for some of the examples, which for you, it's obvious. But it's like an open source project with like, I don't know, millions of downloads that was vulnerable to something that, you know, you had said obvious. Like it's not obvious to everyone. Uh, so we'll touch through all of this and we'll have some live hacking and enjoy this. Nice. That sounds So welcome fun. aboard. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Looking forward to this. Cool. Yeah. And I, and I see in chat, uh, minus one vortex mentioned that they started checking out OWASP for web uh, in 2008, they feel that mm. it was pretty late, but I don't think that's pretty late. That's pretty good, considering. Yeah, I, I think so as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think the, the reason developers don't know much about OWASP, or, I mean, today I think it's a lot better. Like, I, I know developers know, like, OWASP top 10 much more than before. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, the reasoning that uh, initially this, like, didn't really speak to developers is because... OWASP was basically kind of like security for security people because the whole notion of developer security that you know we we're talking about today from like the sneak kind of perspective and stuff didn't really exist. This was you know the early 2000s. We're talking about you know security people to security people, uh, and that kind of like were all of this tooling, everything, all the tradition, security kind of uh, practitionery. Uh, that's kind of like where it started, right? So uh, I'm happy that we're now like making those strides in terms of. Um, talking about developer security and developers do today know much more about like, you know, all stuff then injection attacks, like success and all of those things. Speaking of that, I was actually uh, just this week, well, started last week and this week, it doesn't matter, uh, having a discussion with a colleague of ours about uh, they, that they were saying that it was more of a, like a generalized statement that I was taking. And that's why I was like, I don't know if this is necessarily, I don't, that I agree with it. They were saying that more, you know, most developers nowadays or all developers, they were actually using the word all. All developers nowadays know that security is important. Yep. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. And they referenced a study that did like, uh, they surveyed like 1,200 developers. And it said something like 86% of those developers that were surveyed, if I'm recalling correctly, I don't have the link handy, um, yep. were aware of this, right? But I, I guess, I, I think I, I agree in the sense that more developers are aware of this nowadays than previously. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't generalize and say all because what about new developers that are learning? Like, at least for me, I don't know if, what yeah. the curriculum is like in universities or boot camps nowadays. They didn't have like a, a topic that covered security so much uh, through all my courses that I, the coursework that I went through. So I learned on the job about application security more so than I did in any of my studies that I did prior to that. So that's where like, I think my mindset is like, I think it's still important to talk about and raise awareness of the importance of security in general. 
I, I'm, I guess I know I'm babbling a bit here, but well, like, what are your thoughts on this? Do you feel all developers know security is important right off the bat, or there's still a need to introduce them to the topic? Yeah, I, I think we are becoming aware of it. I think the world is, is genuinely becoming more aware of like security, uh, information security, privacy concerns because of like you know GDPR. You read headlines, you see like a cybersecurity attack has like you know ransomware uh, related stuff to it, the oil rig in, you know, California or whatever was like, you know, hijacked and stuff like that. So like, I think the mindset, the news is is there. Yeah. Um, for developer, I, I like you, like I did not, I think most people don't get like out of uh, formal education, like college or university going out of it, uh, like uh, graduating and uh, and like knowing security. They, they don't, they think they don't even touch about the topic. There was, um, there was a DEF CON, um, Two, three years ago, there was a DEF CON talk a few years ago where someone put on a slide and said, hey, here's like the top uh, the top schools uh, for, uh, you know, uh, computer science uh, in the US, like, you know, I don't know, Harvard and MIT and all of that, whatever. And like none of them had and like said, all right, I'm going to filter them for all of those that actually require you to go through like application security uh, training. And then like mm -hmm. the next slide is like none of them, right? Like zero. That's kind of yeah. like giving you the message that like yeah it's it may be like an extra course or you maybe catch it up on like your own and stuff like that but it's not a mandatory thing the developers are definitely like don't study it i think they are to an extent aware of it how much and how you know little i think that's kind of that probably depends yeah okay cool it was good to hear your your input on this because i think it's it's an interesting topic to see where things are trending and maybe at some yeah. point we'll get to a point where like for sure 98 percent of new developers and just in the whole because there's what there's like billion de, millions of developers around the world something like that or billions like, yeah billions yeah there's yeah. also billions there's some on mars and i know there's like some <laughs> other planets where we're trying to reach yeah. out and right it's and so what percentage of those are aware of the security implications to their code so anyway yeah. but it's great to see OWASP is a is a great resource for us to yeah. learn more about that as you're already aware of security is important you want to learn more about that OWASP is a great resource for that so let's get back into uh learning more about that okay cool so um go here there's a bunch of stuff it's pretty up to date you see there's josh here uh, who's an active member there's like a slack and whatever uh there are some projects and you see there's like uh where do we go uh top 10 projects dependency track is like the uh, npm audit and sneak uh, kind of uh, tooling there's a bunch here that's like really cool to go through um mm, juice shop yeah huh? Yeah, do you know that one? Yeah, I'm familiar with it, but it's always cool. interesting that the name, I like the name of it. It is. Um, so yeah, so one of those is, uh, I can search for it here, but I think um, I can probably get to it there. Right, so this is NodeGoat. So GOAT projects are basically the, the naming here. I, I think I was asking that in some, some place and uh, it was actually hard to go to, get back to like the origins of this but essentially it's a vulnerable application so like you could blame someone to have like a scapegoat so ah. you see a lot of like goat projects like serverless goat like kubernetes goat all of those are like educational uh projects built uh like i said deliver deliberately vulnerable to help you learn um you know all of those security aspects well you know much of the younger generations Laurent, nowadays they refer to goat as greatest of all time so when, I know when they see this, they might be thinking, this is the greatest of all time node app. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's okay. actually the worst. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me show you the code and you judge by... Uh... <laughs> yeah. We'll get to it in a second. Uh, I will get to it in a second. I don't know if we can call it... Uh... How do you... Greatest? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not this one, but... Uh... Server so, yes, there we go. All right, we got to get a couple questions out of the way right away. So you're using VS Code, right? Yes, I am. Why, what why what have... theme and what font are you using? <laughs> Seriously, this is like the first question we're getting. No, but I'm, I'm getting it. it out of the way because you, I know oh, it's on okay, somebody's okay. mind right now. True, true. Yeah. Um, for you, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna choose a different one just because. Uh, how do you want to go to the abyss? Because we're like yeah, sitting into like security issues. We're gonna go. Um, where is that? Oh no 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 yeah. no my eyes. Red to red. Red. Oh, evil. Because like evil stuff, red feming. No, we're not gonna do this. No. Let's do something else. Okay, but seriously, I'm using I like how we're getting out like we're synthwave. Nice. Synthwave. Yeah. Beautiful. There's a uh, yeah, there's um um Ahmed has this uh do I have a purple one? 
like uh, I didn't have that installed, uh, but he does have the oh, come on, uh, the purple uh, uh, VS Code extension, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, but I like the the synthwave stuff, and I had to disable. If you use this, remember remember to disable. Um, it actually has a uh, you know this one right? Like it actually makes the the, the font neon. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but it's like it's it's crushing all that. <laughs> Not using that <laughs> yeah. one. Elf, uh, Elf first in the in the chat. And welcome in first time chatter over on Twitch says light theme or like flashbangs <laughs> on the screen. True, true, yeah. true. Uh, okay, cool. Let's go back here though. Uh, so the node uh, project thing. So yeah, um, Chetan has the, was the person who started this whole thing. And a bunch of us uh, are over here helping, uh, you know, build this uh, here. So node goat. Um, I'm showing you the repository because I'm going to run it and I'm going to hack it together for a bit. Uh, but essentially, okay. it has a tutorial. And you could actually go like a self-based through this, which I'll show at the end also, like through the stuff that we hack. Um, how, you, how you run it, you essentially just need uh, a bunch of stuff. But it's all here. I'm running Mongo um, through, uh, through Docker. So that's like fairly easy to do. Um, and and dbsid, which essentially just adds uh, usernames uh, to the to the database, like we can you know log into the system, and pm run dev, and basically have done all of that, and that's it. That's kind of like the only thing that you need. So uh, this is one of the views that I have. This is essentially my terminal running uh, MongoDB here. I don't want if we need it. Uh, just cloned or formed the repo, um, and do I have it running? I have it trying. So I just did npm run dev here. So we have those. And if I go to localhost uh, 5,000, 5,000. I'm Whoa. in. How did I get in? Let's see. I think it's admin and then super secret password. I won't tell you, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's in the docs. It's, it's in the code. So when you see this, right? Like, this is how the app starts. You see this, it's like a, an employee retirement savings management platform, right? Called Retire Easy. Um, it's nice. It has a bunch of things in here. And, you know, it, it seems decent enough that uh, <laughs> that mm -hmm. some enterprise other systems that I've seen kind of like this looks the same. So like this is pretty realistic from that endpoint. Yeah, for sure. Um, right. Actually, uh, wait a minute. This might be my retirement account is running this software. This nah, might not be let good. Me fix it. Let <laughs> me fix it for you. Let me uh, let me do this thing here. I'm going to take really good care of you. Ah, oh, yeah. Give me all that money. Uh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay. Not really, but uh, <laughs> we'll make it. All right. You saw it here, folks. It looks like I'm getting a bonus at work. Uh... Definitely. For sure. <laughs> And uh, yeah, just send us, uh, send us, uh, you should talk about open, uh, open jobs and careers, just send them over to Snake. This is what we pay people. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but uh, it's a joke. <laughs> <I> know, <right? laughs> We're just kidding. We're just kidding. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Maybe. I don't know. We'll say, uh, <laughs> but send us some resume. It's fun on the live streams, as you can see, and you can, uh, you can uh, hang out with us. Um, actually, you know what? Let's make it a call, a call for uh, for action here because we sure. are actually hiring for uh, .NET and a Python developers. So if you, uh, you know, we're looking for people with experience in those areas, like a senior role is a definition. If you want to, uh, you know, join us and help us educate, you know, everyone around uh, application security on the .NET or the Python ecosystem, reach out to myself or the lovely Brian here to, you know, with your CV, with your questions. Um, how much work do we give people? Do we give them time to sleep? Because you can see Brian hasn't slept like you know three days. Uh, we pay them well, maybe or not. All of those questions, uh, but like it's uh, it's really fun. So yeah, to reach out. Uh, yeah, did, yeah, did I get it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was great. All right. So um, my name is not Node Goat Admin. Uh, let's go to profile and we'll change that. What should I go with? Uh, okay. Yoda. Got to be Yoda. Uh, no, I, I'm thinking. Okay, let's let's uh, this is interactively. Do we have some people on the chat who are going to give me some hacker names uh, oh. from hacker movies? Let's do this. Oh. Hacker movies names. Ooh, okay. All right. Challenge for you, folks, in the chat. Frackberg minus one vortex. Alf. Anybody else that's yes. there that might be lurking? If you, what what mm -hmm. name should we go with? Yeah, give them give what, them. What hacker movies a have you seen, Brian? Let's talk about this until everyone joins in. Oh, recent uh, one. What's that? A recent any one? recent one? No, I don't think so. 
Minus one vortex in chat says breakpoint though. Breakpoint. It's a good name. I uh point, point, break. point break. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <to come. laughs> okay. All right. Let me referencing. I, I see we have we have a really big problem right now where people are not educated enough on like hacking movies. Uh oh. And so exactly. This is gonna be my my mission this live stream to mm. give you all the homework to watch a ton of hacking movies on the weekend. And that's it. You're going to have to watch uh, all of them. Oh, you know, how homework start, sounds right? bad. Just like maybe, I don't know, homework or assignments or a fun, a fun activity. But it, a fun activity. A fun, but it's a, yeah, it's a fun activity. Just watch movies. Yeah. <laughs> Tron, that's a good one. Okay. So is Tron considered, because uh, I was thinking Tron, but is that considered a, a hacker movie? I think it is. But you know, that's the best way of uh, checking in. Let me show you. What is the best way? GitHub. GitHub, because everything's there. Uh -huh. um, movies for hackers. Let me there guess there's go. like an awesome list for this. Of course there is. And of course I have it, uh, yeah. you know, on my top of my head here. Uh, so this uh, person, comma, uh, Nicolas, has been maintaining it. And it's been fun uh, just chatting with him. He's on Twitter as well. Um, there's like a movies for hackers thing. And it's it's... You have like the rating from IMDb, have the year of them. You have, uh, you know, engineers and all of those kind of like splits. So you said Tron, so uh, War Games. Yes, thank you. I was I was looking for that one. I have seen that. Um, like, so I don't I don't have the best memory. That's why I like get, getting put on the spot there sometimes. I'm like, uh, I've seen movies, but I don't remember them. Yes. <laughs> you know? But yeah, I've anyway, seen War Games. Uh, uh, Mr. Robot, the TV show. Definitely the love TV that show one. Is good. How about we go yes. with Elliot then? I remember his name. Elliot, okay. What is yeah. it? Elliot what? Uh, I don't remember his last name, though. No. Okay, El so we'll call Elliot it Robot. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot Anderson? It's something, it had kind of like a reference to the Matrix, too, a little bit. It might have been... It did. Right. Elliot. Ah. Elliot from Mr. Robot. Yeah. Al Alderson. There we go. Alderson. See, it was very... Sad. I knew it was Alderson. close. Alderson. Wow, I actually okay. remembered something. Good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so far we're hacking nothing. We're like just toying around with input boxes. People are like, what is going on? I want to see some live hacks. Yeah. All right. We got the yes, name. Like, submit. Okay, uh -oh. I can't even, yeah, I can't even bank routing number. I can't even save it. Bank routing numbers, bank routing numbers. This one. Uh, and I'll, for example, okay, great, example, for example, I'll just, yeah, just copy paste it because do you know what developers really do? <laughs> they don't code, they just copy paste stuff. So I'm going to do this and there we go. No, I only ever write original code. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure of that. Okay. So we have this, uh, but the thing is, um, you're thinking, you know, let's, this is like the normal way of, of like using an app, but hackers don't do that, right? They, they do yeah. different things. For example, they say, hey, there's input here. Ah, I can use that to send something else. What would you paste in here? Um, mayonnaise. OK, I don't know how you spell that, but I, I'll <laughs> go with this. You said paste. I don't know why. That My first thought of paste was mayonnaise, like you paste it onto a, a sandwich, <laughs> you know? No, but maybe they want to put in, I don't know, they try to enter in an image, or they try to drop a file in there or something, or you know, you just try okay. to basically you try to put in things that are not expected. I and guess. get creative. Yeah, that sounds good. I guess. Image source equals that. Yeah, and then on error function, is that alert? Okay. Okay. And no idea what's going on here, but let's try it. SQL injection and XSS in attacks by all first. That's correct. Let's try one of them. Yeah. Oh, oh that. that worked. That did work. But I mean, so, well, Ron, what's the big deal? Like you just you just made an alert pop up in your own browser. That's not scary yeah. or bad, right? True. I can take some more things like document cookie. And if your cookie is not managed correctly, your other mm -hmm. cookies. And so that means it shouldn't be possible to query it from like the JavaScript side of things from the browser, but rather only over HTTPS. So I, I don't know how it how it's how it is here. But maybe I can look at all the contents of it. And now it looks like mm. I can query it, but it's nothing. Or 
uh, whatever is like giving the uh, you know null or undefined or yeah. But I can do all of those things. But I like that you asked that because we use alert all the time. Um, and this is also subject to this issue. Let's go back to um, Elliot just said that. Okay, so like we're here, no access anymore, but it's as possible and as easy to do the simple script stuff as well. Really? That's super yes. vulnerable then. Okay. So I can yeah, run super any Super vulnerable. Code. Correct. And so back to that question like, why is it? Um, you know, running uh, a script alert is like, oh, I can do just JavaScript, but yes. Now I can do JavaScript, a persistent JavaScript, a persistent mm. XSS issue here, which means any user who might browse, you know, my name or if it's rendered in a list or in this dropdown will have JavaScript code executed for them. So essentially if there is, uh, I'll, I'll save it so like it doesn't uh, bother us anymore, but if there's like ways to do different things, like, you know, uh, to do a different contribution asset of like what I want to put into my retirement fund or um, I want to like transfer money from this to the other. That's probably just like a JavaScript call, right? Like that's just a, 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 an XHR thing uh, going a request. I can run that from a JavaScript thing. So I can actually transfer money and do actions that you essentially, uh, you know, didn't want to do, but I'm doing them in your name. So yeah. XSS is like just running JavaScript on the browser and the client side is essentially most of the time it's end game. Of course, it depends on like how the app is built. What are you doing stuff? Are you like having stuff, you know, sensitive things in local storage, which again, like ending the game and stuff like that, or might need more work. But uh, yeah, you do not ever want to have XSS in your apps. You got me thinking like another avenue that I could maybe use this to my advantage if I'm an attacker, like maybe I have an account and I know like I need an ad, like there's an admin elevated privileged user that has more access to things to maybe view other people's accounts, right? And I get them yeah, to go, I get them to go to my account and I have that script in there and I can maybe get their, uh, you know, their tokens or whatever it may be for an admin and take over their account, you know, and then be yeah. able to see everybody's, you know, retirement savings stuff and do all kinds of nefarious things, right? Definitely. And yeah. there's, there's a bunch of XSS too. There's like persistent and there's toward XSS and there's like different types of XSS, which, might not seem like it's working, but it actually is because it's like depends how you trigger it. And there's like other like uh, uh, mutation, uh, DOM mutation based XSS, like different things that like, uh, like exotic ways of essentially trying to trigger uh, XSS on a page um, that we don't wanna wanna have happening, but it happens. And it happens even for modern applications. But why does this happen? Like before we draw, uh, drill into something else. So why does this happen? Um, so let's kind of like try to think of, um, let me go over here for a sec and I'm not sure I'm seeing you now. Okay, there we go. So here's the code for this app. Um, it's, you know, fairly, let's see what else do we have here? Okay, my config. Uh, so it's fairly split between uh, what I'm actually doing in this application. And uh, you see it's kind of, kind of modern, kind of not, it, it, but uh, so far it uses Express, it uses some other uh, Swig and MongoDB uh, connector and some other stuff. So mm -hmm. Swig, uh, if you haven't heard of that before, that's kind of like a template engine. So mm -hmm. if I go to like my view. You gotta love the JavaScript ecosystem and their naming of things, right? True. I wanna so take a swig have... of that. <laughs> that's yeah. what I think of. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was I was <laughs> I was getting to that point as well. Oh, I beat you to it. Sorry. <laughs> and it's all good. I like that you mentioned that. So, you do, but you do see here. There's like a, this is like a template engine, right? Like this allows you to uh, essentially uh, render HTML on the backend or JavaScript here. Um, well, not render it, but like deliver it, prepare the page, and move it back dynamically where you render it um, on on the server side. So it has this like first a uh, name safe string supposedly uh, last time and some other things. Uh, but first name here, which is where we added stuff in here, uh, the JavaScript stuff. This is, I don't know if it's supposed to be uh, like this is supposed to be like the raw version of how you push things in, or is this maybe uh, is it like why is it not sanitized? So this goes back into how are you reusing Swig. So if I go back into um, where was my view. Oh, sorry, this is the view. Where was my uh, server JS? There we go. So I'm using Swig. If I search for uh, the way that I'm using it, 
right? So it's like uh, I'm setting it as like the, uh, um, the view engine. And there we go. So this is an issue because if you basically start it up and the default is going to be that you auto escape false, as in you are not escaping output escaping the input. That means whatever someone puts in, it just gets rendered. If that's like an HTML element, that's it. So you could fix it simply by doing true. But would you have known of doing that? Or if you had to copy paste that code of like, if the default is not to escape it for some reason, some libraries don't do that by default, mm -hmm. um, then like, you know, you're kind of like, you know, maybe you're not even aware that you might be vulnerable to XSS. Yeah. So it's like when you're picking out these these open source libraries to use that are super helpful to have, you got to see yep. if they have security features turned on by default or if you need to look at their configuration options and turn those on in some cases, yep. right? Exactly. And I'll give you a really good example, which I always go back to. Let's go to uh, sneak IO slash advisor. And I'm, I'm bringing this up so you can see the popularity of one of those packages. If you wanted to use a markdown parser, and translate Markdown into HTML, which essentially is like you know how you write Markdown today, uh, like how like GitHub, Readme, all of that stuff. That's how it works, right? So Markt is a very popular Markdown parsing library, and to the extent of like this is has like five million, almost five million weekly downloads, like super popular, right? And it, it's also like well maintained, right? Last commit two days ago, eight days ago, last release is like well maintained, but there was a point in time a few years back were marked uh, had uh, did not have its uh, its its markdown parsing thing uh, capabilities uh, sanitized as a as a default uh, safe way of doing it and so since it wasn't turned on by default basically anyone who would uh, like this was a proper exploit like imagine that uh, where is my app here imagine that this is like um, um, go to memos okay. Imagine that this is now, this is hello. Markdown that I can use to provide you with a link. So mm. I would, I could do something as simple as this and it would have worked. Not in this version, maybe not in this, I don't know. Uh, you see here it's a sanitized, but if I hadn't turned on that default for that this popular library that gets millions of downloads, this would have worked. Like you had to like specifically understand how to use it as well. Yeah. So this is like super important. Plus, you know, it can just be that you forgot to do it or like, you know, friend told you to do it and forgot to tell you like how to do stuff. Anyway, now like we know how to find it. Um, and look at the curly braces here, right? Like that's telling you several things. First of all, yeah. It's like is that VS Code or? It's it's both it's two things here. Basically, I've got like the curly because of this is I've got like the spelling thing always on, so it's not recognizing it. But also, um, I've got the uh, sneak code extension here. So every time I write something that's insecure, it's gonna tell me the auto escape setting is set to false. Disabling it might allow for cross site scripting, as we've seen. If user input is involved, sneak code security. So I can go wow. uh, find more of this. And I'll show you a bunch more of like here. It's just I'm just like using stuff, and it automatically finds all of them. Uh, yeah. I don't need to wait for like a CI. It's like pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah. It's not rendering there anything, but yeah, like this is this is nice. So um, let me show you some other stuff. Uh, what do you do if you could go over here? So let's let's do more interactive stuff. Imagine this is your input. And what do you do here if you wanted to like abuse this from a security standpoint? Um, I don't know. Maybe I don't know that I would want to do anything because if you increase the contribution, then it's going to take more out of your paycheck, right? So maybe you do want to do that. Maybe, maybe you less. don't. Maybe less. <laughs> oh, maybe negative. What if you did negative? Could you enter negative so then it gives you more towards your paycheck each each payroll? <laughs> Period. Um, um I, at your service, let's do my let's do one. See okay. what it does. Okay, it does change it successfully. Okay. Isn't it true that every time you see this uh toaster message, you know that it's bootstrap, right? Yes, idea. <laughs> For sure. Uh, okay, let's do minus one. Invalid um, contribution percentages. It has error handling built in. Nice. Nice. 
what else? What could we do here? Anything from uh, minus one vortex? Well, minus one or says we should else. hack it. That's what we should do. So should... How do you how do you suggest we hack it though? Minus one or anybody else in the chat? What do you think we should try and enter into the new payroll contribution percent? Let's say zero works. Zero works. Zero works. Okay. Zero works. What about decimal points? Maybe. Well, I mean, I would expect that to work, but you never know. Night. Nice. Oh, okay. Force. Uh, Bleach and first time chatter over on Twitch says over 100. Try that maybe. Oh, okay. 150. I can't accept no. it. Okay. 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 Let's see if we can fool it like that. Okay. So let's go back to 2%. Well, we're doing that. Um, more can ideas coming in, or should we? Yeah. No. Not a number. Try something that's not a number, says Bleach. And not a number. Yeah. I'll literally try <laughs> not nan, not a number. Invalid okay. contributions. Okay. More ideas? What about symbols? Like just put a percent in there. Whoa. Ooh. We broke it. Yeah, go me. Go you. <laughs> Unexpected token. Uh oh. <clears throat> okay. Why is that? Well, if you Google this, I don't know if someone is like a very familiar of like why they get those error messages. And we can Google this a bit and see what gives those out. And now that we know that maybe uh, something's going on behind the sin, uh, anyone want to give us uh, more ideas? Hmm. More ideas? Anybody in chat think of ideas we can do now that we know that it doesn't, it's not able to handle error messages? Alf says we're in now. That's our, that's our, yes. our key to the, the kingdom, I guess, in this app now. Sure. Um, so I'll do it. I'll do it in a reverse way. I'll show you the code, and you tell me what to enter here to make it fun. Ooh. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Let's go back to two. So we have like a function in app. Cool. Yeah. Um, here is the code for it. Handle contributions update. Go for it. Well. Well. Okay. You asking me, or are you asking chat, or are you asking? Uh, I'm all? just. I'm just showing this horrible code to people, so to they are like they're like like ah, oh, don't do this, uh, don't do this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, take a swig of your coffee. Mm -hmm. I like that. So. I feel like the curly the curly uh, lines underneath things are an indication of where I should focus my attention. Makes just sense. Saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Okay. You know, in all the years I've I've been programming with JavaScript, I don't think I've ever used the eval function. Like even before I knew it was not a safe thing to do, I've never used it. So it's always interesting to me to see it actually in code, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I like that you're saying this because I have a story about this. Oh, tell us more. Well, um, let's find a vulner vulnerability. Oh, I've seen that. Code I've injection. Seen that. Yeah, code yeah. injection. OK, what's that about? In Dust.js. It's been you know dating for a while back, but there's like yeah. a code injection in another template library. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned you never, you know, have used like evil, which I, I, I get it. Like it's not something you should usually use. Uh, but if we go back into, let's see if we can find where this has originated. The R. Um, let's see. No. And find a helper for it. So I think it might be a different repository. Let me fire that one up. Project repos, nice fork. There you go. I like your terminal prompt, by the way. Very nice. Oh, thank you. It's uh, should we should say thank you to Matan. It's a Starship. Uh, oh, nice. Prompt. Heard of, I've heard of Starship a little bit. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, All right. So, so you're in a new project that's using that Dust.js LinkedIn package. Correct. And I do want to find. If you click in there, here's a little tip with VS Code. If you just click in there and then you start typing what you want to find, it'll start filtering it down. Ooh. Right. Thank you. It's really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's see if I have my evil statement here. Do we have it? 
Okay. Yeah, email parentheses. Oh, there you go. There you go. So, oh, LJS. Sorry. Yeah. So essentially, um, this this vulnerability that we're seeing here, code injection in DustJS in this popular, uh, you know, back then uh, template engine, uh, is using evil in one of its helpers. Uh, you see, it's mm. like very documented here. Function to evaluate if statements, blah blah blah. And here it is, part of the code. And if some code flows here unsanitized, then you know, again, like game over because you essentially run uh, JavaScript side code. Um, dynamically, right? Like on the server side for every request. Yeah. So in that case, it's a templating engine, but why wouldn't, the, I guess I'm still struggling to follow. Maybe you can explain it to me, Laron. Why mm -hmm. would they need to evaluate a condition mm, I'll via show that you. if statement, you know? Yeah, so here is the, the logic. In the full context, yeah. this is the, template and, uh, the templating engine uh, view file. So oh, I have okay. this dust file. And it allows me, so the whole point of using like template engines is that you are generating them dynamically on the server side. So you could say, if a user has like, you know, this amount of, I don't know, dollars or uh, basketballs, then I want to show them this and that picture or whatever, like update uh, the CSS stuff inline, whatever. So I can actually do this if condition on the server side and it matches whatever this like magic uh, variable is or wherever mm -hmm. it's coming from. So this part of it, if condition lets you as a developer puts the value of that condition here uh, dynamically, whatever you want. So to do that, essentially what you're seeing here, if condition equals something, this whole string goes back into and then, here. Uh, and that's okay. how it's evaluating it. That makes okay, more sense. So this is, yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe you can do it in a different way, but like that's the way that they've chosen to do it. So. Yeah, I totally get that. Like ninety nine percent, you never want to use evolve, and like that's like maybe the wrong use for it. Uh, but some, like we've seen, some people have used that, and there's like different ways of using it. And I'll tell you something else. There's like different ways of using evolve, which are not are not this, right? Like if you do node and you want to do stuff like uh, Brian, Brian sounds is a new function. <laughs> Right. P and then that's that's also a dynamic way of doing it. Now, of yeah. course, because of new function, right? But there are like other like pitfalls and gotchas that actually take this. Like if you do you set if you do set like you use set out like even like a React developer here, but if you do use set timeout, um this one, which is a function call and then like a delay, that mm -hmm. function call doesn't have to be a reference. This can be, again, an actual blah, 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 code in string function call that will get yeah. evaluated. Okay. And for some reasons, if some user input flows here, that's like, again, that this is like bad. Gotcha. No, I appreciate that. I've always kind of, anytime I've seen vulnerabilities around eval, I'm like, well, I have not, I, I can't relate so much because I've not had to use eval, but th those are use cases that make a lot of sense. Thank you for- Yeah going down that rabbit hole with us a little bit. Yeah, um, let's see what else is so you, interesting. We, we left off with the question of what can we enter into that new payroll oh, contribution yeah. percentage? And I see minus one vortex had an answer for us. What about this? So zero semicolon console log and then the process ENV in there. I'll just copy it here. Yeah. Um, See if that works. Well, I'm not going to give you a process CNV because uh, that's on it's my here. machine. But yeah, it's on your machine. But I, I, yeah, but I appreciate this, and <laughs> I'll uh, I'll give you process KD instead. <laughs> and I minus one vortex need, is trying to hack you now, Laurent. Yeah, I'm I'm fairly aware of that. <laughs> um, so it oh. did some stuff. It looks like maybe it didn't do it, but. We can go to where am I running this server on? I'm running it over here, right? And this is the process oh, yeah. ID. So remember, this is running server side. Here is the process ID. <laughs> minus one right. says uh, minus one says they would only steal your hat, nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> no, appreciate that. Uh, I'm, I'm very fond of this hat, so yeah, no, no, that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, like I like that. You could do like process that exit, right? And then enter and then bye bye because the Oh, the whole thing. Just... Boom. Exactly, Goodbye. right? Like yeah. Okay, let's run this again. I like how it logged. It said, Oh, that was a clean exit. <laughs> 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 that was supposed yes. to happen. <laughs> All right, more stuff here that's actually happening. Um, what else should we do here? Elliot, Alderson, contributions, mm. allocations. Allocations is fun. What's what should we do here? Oh, you want to domestic stocks, funds, or bonds? How do you want to invest your, your retirement savings? Yeah, Brian, how do you want to invest your uh, <laughs> retirement fund allocation? Go ahead, tell me. I let me read you. Let me read you. I, okay. I sense a ninety percent on on the new blockchain Ethereum, whatever. I have no idea what those means, but I said like a ninety percent there because you're like living on the edge. That's how I know you so well. Yeah, you know what I was gonna say, Laurent. I was gonna say I'm putting all my money on the table for whatever you're doing, Laurent, because I'm one hundred percent invested in you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you. It's it's likewise. We're invested in each other. Yeah so yeah i don't so, know uh i guess so you can choose enter in stock values there is that what that is or it stocks looks personal. like it i don't know Everything above it will turn all assets allocation above the specific stocks percentage number okay so it's whoa what okay no broke allocation it again. Is called for the user oh hmm Okay. So Wait, anything. When? Yeah. Where they do you go? To, where do you go to set up your allocations? Then I guess. I think it's. I think it was here, right? Oh, oh. it's different thing. It's. A, oh no, it's a different thing. Well, I mean, we have input here, so we could do stuff stuff here, right? Yeah. Can okay, you also? So... What can you do? Exactly. What can you do? Well, one of the things that kind of like is naturally, uh, you don't really see it that often, I think. Uh, like we don't talk about it that much, but for this thing called IDOR. 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 Insecure direct object reference. Ooh, okay. Tell me more. Okay. Cool. So this these are the asset allocations for user named Elliot Alderson, right? Yeah. Okay. What if you wanted to find all of those for this other person called uh, you know Dade Murphy, Kate Libby, uh, Neo, right? Mm. Other users. What? It's that's like the important information. Maybe you want to see what other people are doing and hack it through that. Yeah. Uh, so one way of doing it is. Do, 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 do. There we go. Oh, look at that. Currently, yeah, you are user ID number one. Nice. I would expect Elliot Alderson to be number one. Uh, same. Well, who's number one hundred then? So we no, don't I'll have number one hundred. Should we try number two? Yeah, let's try two. Okay. John Doe, that's there not Elliot Alderson. Mm -hmm. What the heck's going on there? Why would we have access to that under this account? That's interesting, right? Yeah, very. OK. What would actually cause this to happen, I guess, is also part of the problem. Um, let's go back to the code and look at, was it allocations? Yes. OK, so here it is, allocations. We have a console log that I've added uh, before this. And you can see 111 and some other things, I guess. Or did it not log to whatever? Oh, this is the session ID. I'm sorry. This should take user ID and resorting. User ID is from, from the parameters. OK. So I'll need to re-log in. Allocations and then do two. And then, huh. oh, come on, user ID. Oh, if, yeah, just do user ID there. There you go. <laughs> yes. And 
There you go. There One and go. two. So essentially, what happens here is we're getting the user ID, right? But and you know the threshold, whatever. And we're just doing get by user ID, user ID threshold, and returning this. So what we're not, what we're doing is this insecure direct object reference. We have, we have successfully done whatever is needed functionally, mm -hmm. but we haven't tested that an authorization level that my user that logged in right now has access to actually view right user ID too. Maybe it does because uh, I'm an admin or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if if he or she don't have those accesses, uh, then they shouldn't. So. Essentially, this is as easy uh, as doing something like, uh, you know, if uh, what did you do? Request session, uh, wherever I have it. Maybe it's here. I don't remember. But if this is the same as user ID, then this whole block gets inside. Mm -hmm. If it's not, I can say, yeah, hey, you know, your user ID doesn't match that which you should, uh, what you're trying to access, and therefore, you know, access denied. Like you can do this in different ways. Maybe you could have like. Uh, an owner next to the records, like maybe your database is modeled in a way where you set up like who's the owner for it, uh, maybe who created it, you know, different ways, and then you compare those right to the session user, right, not the requested user. Uh, it's like different ways of doing it, but uh, the, the kind of the meaning of this stays the same. And what what stays the same here is the fact that you should really like check for the fact that no one really has direct access to these objects. Yeah, which makes sense, right? Yeah, it does make sense. And I think this also, uh, I'm vaguely remembering, like we should uh, potentially ID, ID things randomly more so than oh, yeah. so that it's not guessable, right? So that at least adds, a, not that it's like, it's a perfect defense against this type of thing, but um, it makes it a little bit more difficult for people to guess like what somebody's user ID is. Um, yeah, incremental uh, user ID is, is for this kind of stuff is probably a bad idea. Yep. Cool. All right. Some people are probably like, hey, is this like a real thing, like insecure direct object reference? Well, people, there we go. Let me show you some links of recording in advance for uh, some people finding this. Uh, I'm pretty sure people are aware uh, what Shopify is. If not, it's like a online commerce stuff that helps you build stores and do e-commerce stuff, sell things. Uh, here we go. I D O R. Shopify had this insecure direct object reference, which someone found out about it. A security researcher worked with through a bug bounty program, earned seven hundred and fifty dollars, and got in. And there's like the whole video and stuff, and we can share the links afterwards. But right, this this is kind of like showing you like there's like smart, like really smart people at Shopify. There are like really smart people at Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. But all of but like like I think this is like Brian, you touched on this to begin with, like. We're developers, but we're not. We may be running like you know amazingly you know performant and great code that runs on spaceships, but no one tells us how to write like uh, secure code, right? Like security is kind of like you know bashed to the side and stuff like that. Which is why you have all of those uh, you know bug bounties programs by people at companies like at Microsoft and Facebook and Shopify and all of those because essentially they understand that you know this is a real risk. So here it is, another one. So it's from Microsoft Teams having IDOR. Again, full story, you can go in, uh, see like how things manifested. By the way, some of those things, they're like so severe that sometimes the finding something that looks to you like it's very simple, it's like it's a, maybe just data leakage or something like that, but they can do some lateral movement. Like it gives them access to some other account that has some stuff in it that's actually like more important. And then that gives them more access and more access. And they kind of like dive, you know, and dig deeper into the details and the system. And they do so much reconnaissance that they actually find out very, very uh, sensitive information. Sometimes they can, from that point on, even pivot to like things like code injection and remote command execution and stuff like that. So it's like super important to understand that those concepts might seem very simple and naive, but they could lead to something very, very bad. So that's that's IDOR for us, and I've given like two, uh, I, I would say, very fairly and recent uh, from 2020 uh, examples of how these things are even happening uh, in real life. Wow, yeah, and at, at big name companies where there's lots of people reviewing the code and and trying to ensure yep. things like that don't happen. So that's that's pretty wild. True. I know we're almost on time. I just kind of like uh, or out time, but um, being mindful of the stuff here, there's like a bunch of the the stuff that we find here. That the sneak code extension uh, finds for us, uh, like this, kind of the obvious thing. There's like some uh, 
sanitize input here, which is an interesting one of like how XSS happens in a different way than what I showed you before. SQL injections and some other things. I highly recommend going through the repository here of this open source uh, node good thing. And just like trying it out, there's like a tutorial there uh, that you can go through. Um, if you have questions also like, you know what, you can just run this, come join us on Discord, ask questions about this, and we'll be happy to run you through this. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we can we can even like do more of those if you want to schedule maybe like a, a future uh, session on this, Brian, and dive into more of those vulnerabilities there. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just sharing the links to the repo that we're going through, just that we showed some examples of over on github.com slash yeah. OWASP node goat. And then to join our Discord, uh, there's a link there, devseccon.io slash Discord community. Link is in the chat and on screen now for people to are watching the recording. Um, so yeah, this was awesome. This was a lot of fun. I, I really felt like a, a true, the true essence of a live stream where we just kind of let things flow the way it was, it was going to flow. Uh, had great discussion on this stuff. Appreciate everybody in the chat room that was adding their comments and thoughts and input on things. And uh, thank you, Laurent, for uh, you know helping put all this together and present it. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Thank you, Brian, for uh, hosting us mm -hmm. and being my co-host here. Of course, love to do so. A uh, little, few little housekeeping things before we go, folks. We have more streams coming up this week on the channel right here, twitch.tv slash sneak live or youtube.com slash sneak sec. We are going to have a panel tomorrow. Myself and Laurent are going to be right back here starting at 12 Eastern, 12 noon Eastern. Um, and we're going to have some two folks that are sneak ambassadors, Sonia and Ben. We're going to be talking about all kinds of topics around JavaScript. So be sure to come prepared with any questions that you may have and join us for that. And we'll get them answered by ourselves and the whole panel. We'll learn more about JavaScript together and 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 feed off of everybody else's experience too. So I'm good? really looking forward to that one. Yes. And if people want to see more about what's what Sneak has to offer uh, in terms of love and JavaScript, we're doing the Sneak Loves JavaScript uh, for the month of May here. And uh, you can go to sneak.co slash JS. I'll drop that in the chat as well so people can click on that if they'd like. Should make a tune out of it. Sneak.co slash JS. Sneak.co slash JS. All right. I'm definitely going back and clipping that and making that a sound bite <laughs> for the rest of the team. <laughs> oh no! So what did I do? Move up for that one, bud. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, that's a perfect way to end the stream. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Laron. And we thank you, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Yes, we hope you have a good rest of your day wherever you are. We'll see you next time. Adios. Bye bye. See ya.